so zero wind chill factor. Who cares? Okay. Sun's out. What the heck? We're Beautiful. in Chicago. We're live. Ready. First place. Supposed to come in. Who cares? The players care especially the passers and kickers. You know, one of the unusual things about the Bears is the fact that Neil Anderson always is not supposed to play, didn't practice on Friday. He wasn't supposed to play last week against the New Orleans Saints. He came in and was a big factor. Mike Ditka told us yesterday that he didn't think Anderson would be able to make it. We talked to Neil Anderson and said he'll play. So look out for number 35. That's the story here at Soldier Field, cold Soldier Field. Back to you, Greg. All right, Pat, thanks very much. There are days I've stood on that sideline. You say, somebody shoot me, please. The Lions have something to prove today. Yeah, you know, they're, they're in an unfamiliar position being tied for the lead in the NFC Central. They need this game more than they've ever needed a game in their life, and they're going to have to put it in the hands of Eric Kramer. They're going to have to throw the football. I don't think Barry Sanders, although he's rushed for over 120 yards per game in 1990 against the Bears, I don't think that'll happen today. The Bears are going to gear up to stop him and force Kramer to beat him throwing the football, and in cold, windy weather, the worst passing conditions there are, I don't think they can get it done. All right. Well, only one team remains undefeated, the 8-0 Washington Redskins, and today they host the 7-1 Houston Oilers. One man with a personal interest in both cities offers this diplomatic assessment. I talked to Jack Freddy just before I came down here. I uh, told him how strongly, how great I think he's going. Got a little message, a uh, secondhand message from Warren Moon sending his best, and I'm going to scribble out a note back to him. And so I'm for the Oilers, and uh, I hope they win, and I hope they go on to the Super Bowl, and I hope that I get the honor to have him back in the White House. Well, for more on the game, we go to Jim Gray, who's at RFK Stadium. It's just a beautiful day for football here at RFK, and the temperature throughout the game should be in the high 50s. Now, this game features the high-powered Oiler offense. In fact, they're the number one passing offense in the entire National Football League, going against a Redskin defense, which has not allowed a passing touchdown in 24 straight quarters. So something's got to give. Now, a short time ago, I had the opportunity to speak to both coaches and even Mark Rippon about the Oilers' run-and-shoot offense. I'm not sure we can stop it. We we had uh, awful, um, we had an awful outing last time against them. They just ran all over us with it as three years ago. We worked real hard on it just for the last two years. We played Detroit early this year, but their quarterback hadn't played and wasn't sharp, and they had lost their running back. And so I don't. I think this is really our first big test. We're nervous about it, I'll tell you that. We're going to play hard. I, I know that. Uh, there's been eight other teams play the Redskins without success on their system. So uh, this not test the system, this test the players, how, how we match up. Is the most important thing for you today to keep the Houston offense off the field, that run and shoot? I think we realize that. We realize that our defense has bailed us out uh, already twice this year, and it's our opportunity and our turn to uh, try to help them out. This game has an added significance and a bit of a revenge factor for Oiler head coach Jack Pardee, because the last time he was here at RFK, was 11 years ago as the head coach of the Redskins. That's the story from here in Washington. All right, Jim, keeping in mind Buffalo's fairly easy schedule the second half of the season, this game shapes up as much more important for the Houston Oilers than it is for the Redskins. Yeah, I, I certainly don't want the President of the United States upset with me, of all people. But, but <laughs> Mr. President, I got a feeling Washington's going to win this game. Washington's got the total package. I mean, running, passing, defense, special teams. Houston's on the road. Prove to me, Houston, you can win a big game on the road, on the grass, and Gibbs teams always seem to find a way to beat the AFC. Okay. Some quarterback notes to pass along now. New Orleans starter Bobby Hebert told CBS Sports last night that his injured right shoulder hurts him more this week than last. He split the snaps in practice with Steve Walsh this week, but it'll be a game-time decision as to who starts. Cincinnati's Boomer Esiason, recovering from a first-degree separation of his left shoulder, will start against the Cleveland Browns today. Cleveland's Bernie Kosar is zeroing in on an accuracy record. Kosar has not been picked off in 262 attempts since this Deion Sanders interception. That's 32 shy of Bart Starr's mark. The records, I think maybe when I'm older someday, maybe I'll look back at them. But the main thing for me is just trying to come up with wins and, and making our offense look successful. And, and part of that, uh, you know, comes from not throwing interceptions, but being conscious of it really doesn't happen on the field. Now, Miami's Dan Marino is also riding a streak. This one dates back to September of 1984. And today at Indianapolis, Marino starts his 117th straight game, excluding the three strike games. And that surpasses Ron Jaworski's mark for Ironman quarterbacks. Now, about these streaks. 
first of all, the one uh, with uh, Bernie Kosar. Bernie? Is that a big deal? Uh, not to me it didn't. I mean, I, I don't be, seem to be disrespectful here, but you know, th that's one record I wouldn't care anything about having, nor would I ever have, having only thrown two more TDs than interceptions. I just think you have interceptions when you're aggressive and when you average around eight yards per attempt, that means you're throwing the ball down the field. And I think Bernie would agree with me. He'd rather be eight and O oh and have a few more interceptions than four and four. No. Dan's, on the other hand, yeah. is a little better. I mean, you got to think his offensive line, and you got to contribute that also to that quick release he has. All right, Terry. Up next, we'll head back down on the field and check in in Atlanta, where Tim McHire has a couple of choice words for Jerry Rice, and it ain't nice catch. That's next <laughs> when the NFL Today continues live from New York here on CBS. Better watch out. The NFL Today is sponsored by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Subway sandwiches and salads made fresh before your eyes. And by Craftsman, a line of over 1,600 hand tools made in America, guaranteed for life. On June 23rd, BMW introduced the completely redesigned 325i sports sedan. I begins at $28,365. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. The temperature never drops below Xerox. That's very important to remember at a time like this, when it's very cold and you've got to get going. Ah. You did remember Xerox antifreeze. The temperature never drops below Xerox. 1847, Werner Siemens opens his first factory and begins to manufacture the world's most advanced telegraph. That was then. This is now. Today, Siemens has 60 factories all across America with over 15,000 manufacturing people turning out an astonishing variety of high-tech electronic and electrical products with quality American industry can count on. Siemens. Precision thinking. Today, Tech Tread Shoe Corporation announced a major retail expansion in 25 U.S. cities. When I see a company that looks like a good investment, I check it out myself. We make it easier to follow your own lead. At Charles Schwab, I can get quotes, financial news, and when I make a trade, commission savings. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. Here's a look at today's weather. Satellite showing cloudy skies around the Great Lakes with lingering snow squalls. The biggest problem will be the wind and the bitterly cold air. In Buffalo, we're talking a wind chill factor of right around zero. And down in Dallas, it'll be chilly, but the partial enclosure of Texas Stadium should offer fans a bit of relief from the wind there. Let's get closer to the action now and head down on the field. First stop, Atlanta, where cornerback Tim McKayer, who picked off a pair of passes against the 49ers last month, was called conceded by former teammate Jerry Rice. Jim Nance has the story. Well, it's a brisk day in Atlanta, but the real chilliness in the air surrounds that running feud between Rice and McKayer. It all stems from the game three weeks ago. Each player unhappy with the other's behavior in that contest. Yes, Rice said that McKayer is conceited, but McKayer fired back, said that Rice is a man with no class. I respect him as a player, but not as a man. You have to think the 49ers may be throwing it Rice's way more than once today to try to show up their old teammate, McKayer. Yet Tim McKayer told us in practice, hey, if the 49ers try to throw my way, I'm going to hurt them. There's another controversy at San Francisco. Charles Haley is indicating he does not want to play for the 49ers after this year. He says he's not going to talk about it now until the end of the season. But he was upset after last week's game against Philadelphia because while preparing for the Eagles, the 49ers coaching staff showed the team defensive highlights from Philadelphia. He said, this is the way you play proper defense. Haley said afterwards, I feel humiliated, and the true character of this team went out when the veterans, the old guys, left this team. There is good news for the 49ers today. Brent Jones is off of injured reserve, activated yesterday. He will be in the lineup today. And also Kevin Fagans had an ankle sprain in recent weeks. He will be full steam for San Francisco. That's the story right now in Atlanta. All right, Jim, this Jerry Rice-McKayer oh, stuff is good stuff. I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, it, 
that's good camera. Put a camera on those two guys and leave it there all day long. Cause I'm telling you, if I'm if I'm Steve Young, I'm going to take my guy Jerry Rice, the greatest receiver ever played this game, and I'm going to send his tail deep and deep and deep, and I'm going to shut him up early. So look for him to go deep early. Jerry Rice coming off a bad game, not a happy camper right now, and Mackayer with that big mouth. That's the first thing I do. I just a little lock on yeah, well, what a difference McKayer's made in that secondary this year. Over in the Meadowlands, the New York Jets are off to their best start since 1988 as they take on the Packers. Randy Cross has more. As Terry said last week, now is move time for teams in the NFL. And nowhere is the schedule kinder than to the New York Jets. If you look at their next four games, their opponents have a combined win rate of six games in those things. You know, Coslett and company can't look forward. But we can, and they should win these next four games. And they're going to need the momentum going into December because they have a much tougher schedule then as they make the real push to the playoffs. And a little late breaking news here from New York. Trevor Maddich, back, in, back up tight end, will be on the inactive list. And that's key not only to the special teams because of his snapping ability, but also to the Jets running game on offense. It's been much worse the last three weeks. And one of the reasons it was good the beginning of the year was Maddich's blocking from the tight end position. That's the news here from the Meadowlands. All right, Randy, let's give a special game ball to Chicago's Mark Carrier for his fine gesture last week. Carrier recovered a fumble and handed the ball to Keith Patz, a handicapped Bears fan. I seen Mark get the fumble, and I seen him still holding it and coming back to the sidelines, and I noticed he was going through all the Bears, and I noticed he was coming right towards me and looking right at me, and then the next thing I knew, that he, he handed over the ball to me. He had to fight through my buddies to get there, but uh, it was kind of shock. I know what it's all about as far as from a family standpoint, having someone in the chair and all the problems and trials and tribulations you go through over the years, not able to walk. And, and, and I know if someone would do that, get my father who's in a wheelchair, give him a football or anything like that, I know how happy he would be and I understand how he feels about it. Unbelievable. I'll never forget it. We are happy to report that upon further review, the NFL has announced there will be no fine for Mark Carrier. Coming up, Leslie Visser joins us with a look between the lines at the zebras when we continue on the NFL Today. Our six-inch meatball sub for $1.69 is four meatballs and Italian sauce. I've never been to Italy, but I know some people have. We bake bread here every day. I come in real early. Also, there's cheese, onions, everything. Just point and it's yours. This has hot peppers because it's mine. I like things spicy. For 25 years, Subway has quietly made some of the best sandwiches anywhere. Like the six-inch meatball sub. Only $1.69, only at Subway. We got a problem. Any ideas? I've got a contact, sir. Well, get on it, then. Get him here now. With years of training, Napa Auto Care technicians provide a secret service everyone should know about. I've had my share of sore throats. I just went to the doc with a doozy. Nobody suggested for fastest relief? Poor septic. Doc was right. I could actually feel the pain go away in seconds. More doctors recommend chloroseptic spray for fastest relief because chloroseptic's powerful medicine penetrates nerve endings on contact. I can't prevent a sore throat from ever coming back. But when it does, I don't have to suffer. For fastest relief, doctors say chloroseptic spray. At BASF, we don't make the plane. We make it lighter. We don't make the lotion. We make it smoother. We don't make the dress. We make it brighter. We don't make the carpet. We make it tougher. At PASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF, the spirit of innovation. Oh, Pat O'Brien's still recovering from the baseball wars. He has the day off. Leslie Vissert does not, and she joins us now. <laughs> Good day to you, Greg. They are anonymous, faceless men in striped suits, but the annual right of fall, the NFL officials are being recognized for their efforts on the field. It's all ball. That's what happened to us. It's all ball. It's all ball. Look at him. He threw the ball. Look at him. I don't think there have been any more bad calls than uh, uh, than other years. 
That head's offside there on the other side. That head's off. They're offside. Already this season, Marv Levy has been highly critical. He's even been fined $5,000 for it. And he's not alone. Other coaches have unleashed a torrent of criticism. We weren't out of control. We reacted to some poor officiating calls, in our opinion. And we got right back on track. The outcry has been over plays like this. The referee called it grasp and control instead of a fumble Pittsburgh ball, which led Commissioner Paul Tagliabu to warn coaches to temper their criticism. Mike, do you feel referees are less sharp? I have no comment on that. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> if coaches or players are given carte blanche on criticizing, uh, showing up officials, I think that would be bad for the game in the long run. So I think we ought to use the proper channels and uh, no, I don't think we should publicly criticize officials. We're not going to be perfect. It's impossible to be perfect. We want to be excellent. And in order to be excellent, we'll attempt to be perfect. Perfect? Not in this case, when a player who was attempting to catch a punt was interfered with, yet it was incorrectly ruled a fumble. Or here, where a ball was spotted on the 34-yard line, but then, following an incomplete pass, was magically re-spotted on the 29. What's going on? Are officials hesitating to make a call because instant replay has made them cautious? When they make the call, it doesn't matter. So I think their concentration uh, it probably isn't as high as it was before they had the replay. While they may be too dependent on instant replay, they've also suffered from over-eagerness. This Phoenix fumble was recovered by Atlanta for a touchdown, but the score was negated by an inadvertent whistle. One of the problems that was in the past were quick whistles. And so far in our 115 games, to my knowledge, I think we've had four. And so we feel we've improved in that area. There's some calls that, uh, that are, are not reviewable. If you're going to use instant replay, let's use them for all the calls. Concerning plays that are reviewable, statistics show that officiating has remained consistent. Despite complaints, most calls are correct. Are you tired of seeing zebras in a huddle? Then you make the call. Is this a touchdown? Officials said the receiver was out of bounds, but it should have counted for six points. Wasn't it somehow ironic that baseball managed to stage one of the greatest World Series without the benefit of instant replay? Imagine the reaction to this play in the NFL. Can we get the replay, please? There are rigorous qualifications to become an NFL official, everything from a weight limitation to a psychologist is consulted to make sure the candidate doesn't have an overactive ego. There's also a report card every week where they're graded on everything from judgment to knowledge. Uh, Terry and Greg, you guys are pretty good on reaction under pressure. <laughs> Do you think these guys need, need to improve? Unless I've got to be honest with you, I think it's just a bunch of bull. I think they should get rid of this stupid instant replay. Le let these guys, leave them along. They're human beings. Bring, let them make mistakes. They're going to make mistakes. Players, coaches make mistakes. Organization, we make mistakes. That's a human element of the game, and let it happen. It creates controversy, which creates rivalry, which makes the game more exciting. Now we have no more Monday morning quarterbacking. When we come back, <laughs> Terry Bradshaw has a heart-to-heart -heart with Joe Montana. Everyone has a dream, a vision deep inside. When I decide to follow up on an investing idea, I need a broker who's ready when I am. We make it easier to follow your own lead. I can call Schwab at any hour, nights or weekends, get the information I need, even place an order to trade. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. Someone's taken some steps to juice up their batteries. And today's Duracell batteries can even outlast the ones we made just a few years back. You can't top the copper top. We've added the leading cough suppressant to the proven cold relief of Alka-Seltzer Plus. So now, you can relieve your cold and cough together. Introducing Alka-Seltzer Plus cold and cough medicine. Two kinds of relief from only one medicine. Once again, BMW takes the luxury sedan where it's never been before. The 750IL with ASC plus T. Automatic stability control plus traction. Every second, computers monitor wheel slippage and apply up to 100 engine and brake adjustments, helping keep the driver in control. Proving the difference between an ordinary sedan 
and the ultimate driving machine. Only two quarterbacks have earned four Super Bowl rings. One is this man, Terry Bradshaw, and the other is Joe Montana, who's now recuperating from surgery on his throwing arm. And on Friday, the two got together in San Francisco to talk about football and life. I was just normal tendonitis, which I've had a million times, you know, over my career. And it started flaring up again, so I took a couple of days off and I came back to throw. And I threw a post pattern down the middle and while we were in training camp, and I felt it tear. You know, I just felt something different. Felt I felt a pain. complete different kind of pain. And like I said, the intelligent person in me came out and said, well, let's throw another one, you know? So I did. <laughs> it's not torn, yeah, let's really yeah, tear it. We'll take care of it for good. And, you know, I threw one more pass, and that was it. From the moment you heard it throwing the post pattern to the moment you knew when you tore it, mm -hmm. how, how much time elapsed? So, oh, God, seven, eight weeks. You regret, do you regret not just going right in? Because that's two months. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I look back on it and say, well, guy, why didn't I just go ahead and do all this then? But, you know, at that point, you know, you try to avoid surgery. I think all athletes do, you know, unless it's mandatory. Yeah. You know, there's no other way to fix it and do it that way. Ever, ever scared you that you're not going to play again? You not think yet. about that? Do you think about it? I thought about it initially more, more so right after surgery. You know, you get in those medicated states out in the <laughs> hospital, you know. <laughs> My back surgery, I remember that was the worst time for me, was immediately after the surgery and going, oh, God, am I ever going to play? What am I going to do? How am I go from here? All this, I'm going, this is crazy. And the minute I, I got out of there, I felt a lot better. And the same thing here. And you know, once I was in there and I'm going through the surgery, I started going, well, God, what if this doesn't get better? What am I going to do? In my situation, they kept bringing me up, yeah. do you? Yeah. And you had old Bradshaw. He would have to go out with the same. <laughs> oh, I know. They kept saying, and I kept trying to say, but he tore his ligament. And I think that's one of the major differences is, is I have no ligament problem. What is the ultimate time frame they're giving you before you can throw a football again? One thing that I'm not going to do is I'm not going to hurry it because I can't make it back for this season. And, I mean, if I wasn't making an attempt to come back and play, like if we made the playoffs or, or something towards the end of the year, then I would be taking that approach. But right now, I'm going to take it week by week, and as it gets better, I'll do a little more. All athletes experience it. You've had your back, but you've never had to experience what you're going through now. What's harder, watching Steve Young play well, standing on the sideline, or what you're going through with the rehab on this elbow? There is a certain amount of competitiveness that has to come out in you. And if I feel comfortable with him playing, what good am I? You know, I mean, I won't be good to myself. I won't be good to the team because, oh, what do I care if I play? I mean, he has the same feeling. And uh, that's why he didn't want to go somewhere else because he wants this job. And, uh, you know, I mean, so... Well, you are getting old. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, <laughs> getting, getting, out, getting down the road, but, you know, still got a little fight left in me. Hey, and there's nothing greater. You sit back and think there's nothing like playing in those Super Bowls. Is I mean... No, I, I think that's the, people say, well, what more is there for you? I mean, you've had four Super Bowls, and I said, that's what it's all about. I mean, if, if I didn't know what a Super Bowl was all about, it would be easier for me to say, ah, oh, forget it, you know? But the taste of that victory in the Super Bowl makes your whole career worthwhile, and to be able to do it four times makes it four times as bad, and makes you want, want to get back there even more. You will be back. Oh, I will be. Is that just a typical tough player talking, or... <laughs> Do you think that he's a little bit afraid that he may not come back? Well, I, you know, I, I, I've been there. I've, I, I've been at that crossroads in your life where, or in a career where it might be over. And I, I have to think in the back of Joe's mind that he's a little bit scared. I mean, it's only natural that he, sh that he should be a little bit scared. And talking positive like this uh, and reflecting, I think it's good for him. All right. We'll be back. Stay tuned. Indianapolis. Daytona. Talladega, Pomona, Baja. Why do we go to such distant places to put craftsman tools to the test? If you're going to guarantee a tool forever, it's got to take the torture even guys like you dish out. 1,600 craftsman hand tools, made in America, guaranteed forever, only at Sears. Besides, this kind of testing is fun. Is somebody making a killing in computers? I'm afraid it looks that way. And now, can Jessica put the bite on the murderer? Oh, dear. Murder, she wrote. Then, the woman he attacked... This is the man who raped me. ...is the only doctor who can save his life. But will she? Jacqueline Smith, The Rape of Dr. Willis, tonight.
Can Murphy keep her cool with a wild young house guest? She's just testing her boundaries, searching for her identity, searching for Don's uvula. An all-new Murphy Brown, Monday. One o'clock kickoffs upcoming at Soldier Field, Detroit at Chicago. Eric Kramer starting for the Lions. The Jets are hosting Green Bay, Atlanta and the 49ers, and Tampa Bay at Minnesota. For most of you, those games are next. Tara and I will be back at halftime and throughout the day with scores and highlights. But right now, game time. Coming your way at 4 o'clock Eastern time, the New Orleans Saints off to one of their best starts ever. Take on the Rams in Anaheim. Elsewhere, it's the Phoenix Cardinals challenging the Cowboys in Dallas. The action starts at 4 Eastern here on CBS. This is CBS. Men love the new Ford Explorer because it's one tough vehicle. But it also appeals to the fairer sex because it has push-button on the fly four-wheel drive, more room than any vehicle in its class, and rear anti-lock brakes. So it's perfect for getting to all those important Washington social functions. Good afternoon, ladies. See a new Ford Explorer at your local Ford dealer today. If you didn't get a Ford, you didn't get a deal. Kay Slaughter is running away from her record calling for higher taxes. City Council minutes show Kay Slaughter said, quote, the city may need to look at the issue of a local income tax. The Freelance Star quotes her as saying she would consider imposing higher taxes. But Delegate George Allen has a proven record of fighting for tax breaks for older Virginians. In Congress, George Allen will work for tax cuts to help families and create jobs. George Allen, experienced conservative Republican. Can you spot a career politician when you see one? Kay Slaughter has been an educator and community leader. George Allen spent nine years in the General Assembly in Richmond. Kay Slaughter supports a balanced budget amendment to protect taxpayers. George Allen voted to raise your taxes. Kay Slaughter says it's time to stop politics as usual. George Allen voted himself a 59% pay raise in the General Assembly and says he'll stay in office till the day he dies. So if you spotted the career politician, slaughter him with common sense and accountability. 90210's Luke Perry plus Kenny Loggins on the next Arsenio. This preview of the upcoming 16th Winter Olympics is a presentation of GGP Sports. <laughs>